Hello everyone, welcome to another video about Tesla Matrix headlights. Now we did do one video before uh, explaining how Tesla Matrix headlights work. But it was hard, it's always hard to film headlights at night and it was hard on that occasion because I just had a small GoPro camera. However, the other night we had these misty conditions which is really good for showing up how the beam pattern is working on these Matrix headlights and how much they move around and what they do to shadow of the vehicles in front so you're not blinding either a vehicle in front of you or an oncoming vehicle and they're very very good so in this video here i'm just going to run a number of clips keep it really simple this is just going to show you a number of the scenarios on my drive home uh, and what the headlights are doing to so blank out segments and you should be able to see they actually react really quickly to other vehicles and i've not had one single person flash me or indicate that my headlights are blinding them in any way. And that is proof in the pudding. I've covered over 5,000 miles in this car now, and uh, not one single flash from anybody. Now, if I was in a 2021 or previous Tesla Model 3, Model Y, I can almost guarantee you, you get flashed on a fairly regular basis because the headlights didn't dip quick enough or the beam patterns shining in their face. But the new Matrix headlights on this 2024 Model 3 Highland are actually very, very good. Now, I do have a couple of quick criticisms, which I'll come on to in a minute. Uh, but you can see here, uh, as it blanks and shadows out various vehicles, it does a really good job of that. Now, in the first video, there were a couple of comments from people asking, does it blind pedestrians? Does it blind cyclists? So we actually run a couple of tests to try and uh, give you the answer to that. Now, essentially, if you're in a dark road and it's a pedestrian walking along the pavement without bright lights about their body, it keeps the full beam on. So you could say it can blind the pedestrian, uh, but what's the counter argument? Is it more important that the car has bright lights and can show that there's a pedestrian there, you're more likely to see them and not hit them? Uh, possibly so. I think I'd, if I was walking down a country lane in the dark, I'd rather be seen but blinded or dazzled by lights than not seen and hit. The same kind of applies for cyclists. Now we tried testing this, we didn't have a bicycle with bicycle lights to test at the time on this evening, but we uh, did a couple of tests where uh, we held a, basically just a phone torch up and drove towards Gintz holding a phone torch. And what we found there is that it doesn't dip until quite late. I think if you've got a very bright bicycle light, it would actually recognize it earlier and dip and shadow that cyclist because it would think there's possibly a headlight of a car. So I think if you've got good bicycle lights, it's quite likely you are going to see a dipped section of beam pattern and not dazzle that cyclist. But it's about having good lights. If, you just got, uh, if you're just walking along the road in the dark with just a phone torch, you're probably going to be faced with pretty bright high beams until quite late on. The other test we did was uh, Gintz driving in front, and we show you some footage here, and he's in a Mazda MX-5, which has actually also been lowered, so a very low car. Does the Tesla blind Gintz in the car in front? Well, we tried doing some footage, and the answer is no, basically. It does a very, very good job of always shadowing them out. Now, we tried to film, actually, from the boot lid of that Mazda MX-5, looking back at the Highland. But because of the mist, it actually makes the Highland look like the lights are dazzling, but they're not. The only time you get the headlights going into the back of the car is when you may be going out of the crest of a hill, but that will apply to all cars. It was actually good. We thought we'd have some really great footage, but it just doesn't come out. It actually looks like the headlights are quite dazzling, but that's not the case in person. And we'll show you a couple of clips, but it's just the footage is hard to get. Now the criticisms of it are, there's a couple of scenarios. One is if there are street lights in the area, it often still keeps the full beams going up, full high beam, and it shouldn't, not in street lit areas. I know my Porsche Taycan wouldn't, and I believe from comments on the first video that it actually could be illegal in places like Germany if to have high beams on in a street lit urban area. The Tesla still does that, so I think there's probably a bit of software tweaking to say, well, if there's enough street lights in, or if there are street lights, then the high beams just don't come on, simple as that. The other scenario is when you're approaching a T-junction, you've got cars passing across the path in front of you. The Tesla, if it recognizes the headlights, actually does dip very quickly and can prevent dazzling, but there have been one or two occasions, I'm coming up to a T-junction, a car's passed in front and it's got a high beam on the side of that car. So there's probably that, you know, the driver's not looking towards you because they're gonna cross the front of you, but it could do with just, again, software tweak to say that when you're slowing down or approaching a T-junction 
and you come below a certain speed that it may as well just dip the headlights. It doesn't need to be in full beam when you're just coming up to a junction of a few miles per hour. It needs to be in full beam when you're above 20 miles an hour, for example. So I think there's a bit of software tweaking, but don't get me wrong, I'm really pleased with these Matrix headlights. The main thing I was worried about is from the older cars, the reaction to dip the headlights was actually always very slow. So I was worried that although they might have working matrix, their reaction time to other vehicles is very slow, but that's not the case. So as you're seeing footage here of me driving along, you should be able to see all the different segments of light moving around and shadowing the cars in front and reacting very, very quickly. And like I said earlier, the proof is in the pudding. I have not been flashed a single time from another car. So the matrix headlights get a thumbs up for me. There are possibly a couple of little software tweaks to improve it. I'm sure that will happen. And what will be really good is when the Matrix software rolls out to the earlier cars. So this will apply to, in the UK at least, the 2021 onwards Model 3s and all the Model Ys because they actually have Matrix headlights. And there is apparently a software about to roll out when it lands. We will, of course, film that, do some comparisons. Will it be as good as a Highland? How will that work in comparison? Will they tweak those little things that I'm suggesting there? We'll wait and find out. So make sure you're subscribed to our channel and you'll see some more headlight stuff coming soon. In the meantime, I'll just leave you some footage here as I drive home. I think it's fascinating. So thanks for watching.